Hi there. We're between storms here in the UK. It is horribly windy. I'm on this mad field. There's pottery, brickwork, there's stuff everywhere. I've only been here five, ten minutes. I've found coins, buckles, buttons. I'm not going to do any live digs. I'm just going to show you what I find. Setting things up is going to be too crazy, but I'm really hopeful we'll find some quite nice stuff. You may not have heard any of that. I've got a new battery in my mic now, so let's hope it works from now on. I'm not going to do any live digs. Too crazy and too windy. I'm picking things up every two or three seconds. So I'll just show you what I find. Well, we're finding a few nice bits and pieces. But as I said, it is completely mad. I'm not even, I'm not even plugged my speaker in. I don't think you'd hear it. But I've got something else in. It's a bit like pass the parcel when you're doing it like this. It's another tiny little button. I found hundreds of these. But I've also found a nice buckle. A couple of what I presume are Georgian coins. That might be even earlier. A Victorian farthing. And I was getting a little bit worried about not finding anything particularly early until this rather lovely piece of pottery. Now, I think that might be medieval. I'm not sure. There are people who will know, and, and they're on the detecting hole. And I'll, I'll put that up later. And then a tiny, tiny little signal. And it's a tiny, tiny little hammered. It's not in the best condition. It's, it's got to be a farthing of sorts, but, and I don't know how early it is. Could be Elizabethan, could be a lot earlier. Who knows, but that's really, really lovely. It's the second hammered coin I found here. So let's just hope there's a few more. I'm afraid this isn't going to be the most picturesque video. Conditions just aren't lending themselves to being very creative. But just listen to all this. You may have half a chance of hearing me because I've got my back to the wind. Just having to... There's a signal in between all that iron. And I found some really cool things. I've rarely known such a productive field. Nothing. It's completely crazy, but really good fun. Ugh. You've really got to have your wits about you. It's a sweet little button. I don't know when the camera fell over. I wasn't concentrating. It's a little button, and I think that's got a bit of age to it. I've also found what looks to be a copper love token. I don't think that's silver, but it's twisted in such a way. I have to clean that up and look at that later. And then two banging signals. I knew what the first one was. It was so obvious. I often say it in videos, don't I? It couldn't have been anything else. <laughs> it's a cradle bell. <sighs> and that's not a whole one, but it's an early one because you can tell by the, the, um, the suspension loop. Lovely great thing. <laughs> 
And then this, this was equally. Oh, that could have gone, that could have gone the wrong way, but it's a really cool buckle. Nice big one. Socking great thing. And then there's that as well. I didn't know what this is. I thought it was a, just a, a, a handle for furniture and it could well be, but you don't tend to get handles finished with knobs on the end because they tend to fit into something like that. So they don't tend to have that. So could that be a bracelet of sorts for a child or something? Who knows? Gosh, so there's some, there are masses of things in this field. They're all over the place. It's just a matter of getting through all the, all the iron. You just can't tell how mad it is out here at the moment. And there's going to be a huge storm tomorrow as well. There was one yesterday and one tomorrow, and this is the calm in the middle. And look at this, I've just found it's literally on the surface. There he is, look at that. Isn't that a beautiful little buckle? Sweet. Still got its pin in it. Gosh. <laughs> it's mad, things are everywhere here. Well, anyway, here we go. There it goes into the pocket with the good bits. Pocket with the bad bits and the pin pointer. Control pocket. This one's empty at the moment. I used to put my phone in it, but don't anymore. But probably really, really good things go in there. And really, really, really good things go in my proper pockets. <laughs> Not losing them. That's really faint. So likely to be a piece of lead. I'm taking advantage of the wind dying down slightly to do a live one. Yeah, that's really tiny, tiny sound. It's the tiny bit of bronze <laughs> of all the little things. Oops. Well, I'm sorry for the rather unesthetic camera angles, etc. If the wind's so strong, unless I've got my back to it, you're not going to have a chance of hearing me. And I've just found my second hammered coin, even though I have to say it's not in very good condition. Um, there's only really half of it, but it's a voided long cross. Oops. Hi there. I thought we'd have a very quick look at this long cross penny. It's such a shame that it's damaged and not whole because it's in really good condition. There's a lot to go on. It's not clipped. Quite a good reason it might not be clipped is the fact that the that, that long crosses were introduced in the first place to stop the clipping that was inherent in the short cross pennies. By the cross going to the edge of the coin itself meant clipping was far trickier. Um, but this is a really lovely piece of coin, this. Um, even when, even with your spink, identifying long cross and short cross pennies is really hard work. Fortunately, on the detecting uh, tascals, 
Tasky, come other way. Come on. Tasky's on his perch. Fortunately, there is a warlock on the detectinghub.co.uk who can identify coins before you even send him photographs of them. And I put this on and he came back very quickly and said that it is a class 5B. Now, there are millions of classes and lots of variations within the class of long cross pennies. I thought that they were purely in the reign of Henry III, who was the, I think, the fourth or fifth longest reigning monarch with about 55, 60 years after Victoria and James I and, and George III and people like that. So he was around for a hell of a long time. But these pennies came into circulation between 1247 and 1272. What I had forgotten was that in the first reign, in the first years of Edward I, um, 1272 to 1279, short cross pennies with Henricus were still in circulation. And it can be quite tricky to know which ones maybe Edward struck during the reign of Edward I. Anyway, the only, the main reason I want to talk about this quickly was that the Warlock Electors um, identified it as being Class 5B. So I looked it up in Spink and got frightfully excited because Class 5B says that this was quite a rare coin. I, the, the first one that comes up is £150 for finest and more than 500 for very fine. So I got really excited until I read the next line which says as above but crown with end pellets and if you look closely on this the crown has end pellets which brings it right down in value um, not that it's much value anyway because it's not whole but it brings it right down in rarity sadly um, instead of pellets um, if you had a crown which had sort of a foliate um, end to it um, bifoliate I think or trifoliate one of the two um, either two or three little sort of petals coming off the the, um, the crown itself, you'd be looking at a rare coin. Sadly, this isn't a rare coin, but it's a very lovely coin all the same. Task up. I'm sorry we didn't bring Tasky out. The places I'm going to at the moment are really, really hard for him because they've either got livestock in them or they're near roads. And he can't, he can't come to places like that. There's just no way. Um, he will run off. He'll come back. He'll come back fairly quickly. But the instinct to chase and kill is, is really strong. So he can't come out. But there will be lots of times when I'm in places with you know wide open spaces and stuff when he can come out. And it's much more fun having him out. And generally speaking, he's pretty good. But um, but just ugh, again, not this time. So sorry about that. But we'll see him soon. And on that note, thanks for listening to me, for wishing away, and let's go back to the fields. So that's really nice and shows some proper age to this field. I don't think I've scratched the surface here, I really don't. There's so much going on, um, and I've only done two or three hours. It's doing my head in, There's, it's just so loud and chatty that I, I've got to call it a day. I can't. I can't go on. I'll come back. I've got a lot left to do, um, and even though there's only half of that coin, or two thirds of it, it's in really nice condition. So I'm absolutely thrilled. I've also found all sorts of other things. Hoops. More Victorian coin. Quite an interesting button with a number or something on it. Even though it might not be a button, it might just be a stud. And a socking great big spoon ladle. I'm looking forward to coming back here under slightly less wild circumstances. Lovely little button, look at that. Sweet. Well, we'll end on this. 
It's an absolutely banging signal. I suspect it's a copper penny of sorts. Well, we're out. Well, it's not a penny. It's a button. It's a socking great dandy button. And that's really, really nice. I found a hundred buttons today, but none as nice as that. That's a really good one to end on. I'm really looking forward to getting back onto this field, but you've got to be in the right mood. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to choose my time carefully. There's so much going on. You've got to be in the right frame of mind. There's just no doubt about that. And I've done a few hours today and I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm completely done. Sorry not to bring Tasky. There's a road literally 200 meters away. There's no way that he, he could come somewhere like here, but I will bring him out fairly soon. And thanks very much for joining me and see you next time when more than likely we'll be back here.